What we're talking about right now is linear factorization theorem. Now what we've done in the past looks very similar to this green problem down here uh, where we started with a polynomial, we factored it and we found the zeros of the polynomial. Now what we're actually going to do is we're going to try to go backwards. So we're actually going to start with our zeros and we're going to try to build back our polynomial. Now what you should know uh, that we've already talked about is if I give you a zero, all you have to do to write it in linear factored form is say x minus c. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these and see if we can't write them in linear factored form. So for 4, you would have x minus 4. Uh, negative 3, when you subtract a negative, it's the same thing as adding. And then if you have 2i, you'll say x minus 2i. The one thing you've got to know with a linear factored form is that any time you're given an imaginary 0, it always comes with a pair. So it's always going to be the conjugate of your uh, nice little zero. So if 2i exists, then negative 2i exists. So we'll say x plus 2i would also be a zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have to build back our polynomials, and we'll do this through multiplication of these linear uh, factors. So let's look at an example and see if we can't figure it out. So it says find a fourth degree polynomial f of x with real coefficients that has zeros of negative 2, 2, and i, such that f of 3 is equal to 150. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take our zeros and write them in linear factored form. So we'll say x uh, plus 2, we'll say x minus 2, and then we'll say x minus i. Now like we just talked about, if that exists, then negative i will also exist. So what we'll do is we'll have also the, the linear factor form of uh, x plus i. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to build back our function, but there's also something that uh, is going to make our problem a little bit different. And what that is is your leading coefficient. Okay? As we've studied in the past, your leading coefficient really doesn't affect where the graph is. What it affects is actually uh, a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink or if it's flipped upside down. So there are actually infinitely many functions that have the same zeros. So what we need to try to do is to calculate what A is. Uh, sometimes they'll tell you A is 1, but if they don't, and they give you something like this, where they give you a function value, we're going to use that at the end. But first we're going to try to multiply. So I'm going to say, uh, my advice is to always multiply the conjugates together first. So these two are conjugates, so we'll multiply those together. You get x squared plus 2x minus 2x, and then minus 4. Don't skip steps, because if you get in the habit of just uh, squaring this and squaring this, then you're going to uh, get the wrong answer on polynomials that won't cancel. Uh, x times x is x squared. x times i is ix. That'll give us negative ix, so those will cancel. And then negative i times negative i is negative i squared, which is really going to be a positive 1. So lastly, what we're going to do is multiply these two together. So we'll get f of x is equal to a, and then we'll actually end up with uh, x to the fourth, and then minus 3x squared and then minus 4. Now I did that math in my head, but x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. This will give me a positive x squared, and a negative 4x squared will add to give me negative 3x squared, and negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4. So now we have our polynomial, but right now we're still looking for what is that a value? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take uh, our function value that was given to us in our problem, f of 3 is equal to negative 150, and plug that in. So 3 is going to be our x value, and negative 150 will be the y. So we'll say negative 150 is equal to a, and then we could have plugged it in either place, but I'm just going to plug it in down here in our final answer. 3 to the 4th minus 3 times 3 squared, and then minus 4. So working this out, uh, 3 to the 4th, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So we'll get 81 uh, minus 9, so it'll be 27 minus 4. So let's see, that'll be 31. So we'll get negative 150 is equal to uh, 50a. So divide both sides by 50, and you should get a to be a negative 3. So our polynomial is actually going to be this. f of x is equal to negative 3. Well, let me go ahead and write that in pink to let you see the difference or how we plugged it in, and then x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and distribute that and uh, get our what our final answer will be. f of x is equal to 
negative 3x to the fourth, and then plus 9x squared, and then plus 12. So that's basically how we use the linear factorization theorem. We'll look at another example here in just one second.